Hey guys, so it is like early in the morning, but I knew I couldn't do this later because I have other, I have things to do today and I needed to do this now. I'm still kind of groggy, but I'm going to do it anyways because yeah, I need to. <laughs> Alright, so we were talking about the kids aren't alright part two and um, I really think they did a good job wrapping up the storyline for all three plots. I think they did a really good job of it. Um, now for the Becky thing. Man, and that's the thing. I was so, like, predicting that she was going to break up with him in this episode. And, you know, watching it, I was a little hesitant because I'm like, well, maybe she'll take Drew's little advice and maybe give him a second chance. But then, no. She ended up dumping him. I'm like, there goes Becky and Jonah. Just wave to it as it goes by. I don't think it's a, it's not, well, it can't come back. She's graduating today, so I think our Becky and Jonah ship has sailed and now we can just watch it from afar because we can't get it anymore and it's kind of sad but see the thing that interests me is Jonah as a character because now we're starting to learn a little more of his backstory and I don't necessarily hate him I actually am a little more intrigued by him because I kind of want to see more of him. I'm not sure if he's gonna be in the next class or not. I actually really don't know. But if he's not, that's gonna be such a waste of a character, honestly. And yeah, I think we need more of him, but who knows, right? I'm just... that whole plot, I was like, man, do you writers really have to make Drew seem like the good guy? I mean, I understand you wanting to redeem him after all the crap he's done, but seriously, huh, I don't know. I'm so indifferent with him, like, towards the end. I can, okay, I will say this. I can understand that he's trying to change, but honestly, still with the whole, like, Claire shading thing these days and still being upset with her about that, Get over yourself. Get over it. Move on. But no, he still is like, you know, holding a grudge towards her. And I hope that this episode, as much as I hate, like, they are probably my biggest no TP of the show, of like the new generation, Claire and Drew. But on a really weird note, I hope they have some sort of interaction tonight. Is that weird? I don't know. I'm just hoping that they kind of get over that conflict and put an ease at everything. I don't know if that's actually going to happen, but I kind of want to see that because then maybe I'll be like, okay, maybe you grew up a little bit. But right now, I'm still, I don't know. But the whole Becky thing, I was like, I kind of saw it coming. But I didn't want it to happen, but it did anyways, so nothing I can do about that, unfortunately. Although, I like how she was kind of intertwining with Zig's plot. Again, um, Damon asked her to um, send a video message to Zig. And I think that was kind of funny because Zig was like, why am I getting a text video message from Becky Baker and Grace is like that annoying blonde. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I guess people know about her. So I actually at first was a little hesitant. I'm like, what is Damon doing? But at this, but I kind of realized more towards the end. I think that was really sincere, and it made me happy because I know that they were good friends. They just got off on the wrong paths end up going their separate ways and then getting involved in this bad stuff but I really do think that in all through this they still had that care about each other and I really love seeing that end 
when Zig brought him the cheeseburgers with no onions, <laughs> and uh, they ate together, and, and now I think they've mended that, and um, hopefully that their friendship is back, because as much as Damon has been annoying lately, you know, I don't want to see, I don't want to see anyone in a gang, you know, like, that's such a really rough spot to be in, and I think da even Damon deserves better than that, because I think he realized that he needed to redeem himself, and I think he did that. Oh my gosh, okay, Tiny, mind blown, just in this episode, his development, that scene, I was like, I was nervous, I was scared, but at the same time, like, it was heart-wrenching. That was such an amazing scene. Kudos, writers. You did that so well. <sighs> that was such an emotional scene for him. Because, as we all know, Zig finally realized that he needs to do the right thing. And he told the cops that it was Vince who shot Damon. I'm like, finally we can be rid of Vince. Bye-bye. Don't come back. Sayonara. Although, that was really weird how he was, like, trying to be supportive all of a sudden. I'm like, okay, like, you come to the musical, you give Zig flowers. Like, how random. <laughs> Who, what, what guy gives another guy freaking roses? Like, I don't know. Like, I, I didn't get that, but I was kind of like, okay, you show one bit of supportiveness and somewhat okayness, if that makes sense. And, uh, no. No. But that was so hard for Zig because they took him away right in front of his face and I think Vince knew that it was Zig and I'm like, <sighs> I just hope he gets put in jail, doesn't come out, doesn't try and hurt Zig or Tiny anymore, and we can be done with this whole thing. Wouldn't that be nice? I think it would be. But I'm amazed at how much I love Zig and Tiny as a friendship. That I really want the best for them in these upcoming new episodes in the next class. Like, such, such a great friendship. And I love how Zig, Zig's the one that I know, like, you know, Tiny was upset with him, you know, because we're learning a little more about Tiny's background, about his parents, and how Vince was the only person he had. But I knew Zig would be the one to calm him down, and he did. And to see Tiny cry, I was like, oh my gosh. I wasn't expecting to see that, but holy crap, that was such a great scene. So now they're going to live with Jose for a little bit, and figure out what they're gonna do and where to go from here and um I really think this is gonna be a good fresh start for them so I'm just I have the hopes for them because I really want to see good for those two so much um and also oh my gosh okay the the play the play we got to see it. I was so nervous we wouldn't because of the whole gang thing. I'm like, don't screw this up. I want to see the play. And we did. And Zig... I'm, I'm sorry. Zig is such a bae. Like, oh my gosh. Like, this whole season, I've just been like, okay, whoa. Like, I freaking adore him. Like... Just his whole scene and his the climbing and the picking up Frankie over his shoulder, like, he, oh, he's amazing. And then, um, with the whole Frankie thing and the Winston thing, and I was honestly really impressed with the way Winston kind of wanted to apologize to Frankie and... Uh, thank you, Zoe, for knocking some sense into him and telling him he needs to do something if he wants her back. And, um, I, I kind of predicted, I was like, I'm like, Frankie's gonna just walk up and, you know, 
take the stage, and she did, and she's all fierce, and her voice is amazing as always, and um, I think I think I'll give them another chance as a couple because I personally don't hate Winston. I don't. Um, yes, he made a mistake. But, hello, my favorite character of all time on Degrassi is Eli. Do you not know how many mistakes that man has made? And I still love him. So, I'm not giving up on Winston just yet. I really think that he could become a better person. And I hope that he does for Frankie's sake. Because Frankie is amazing. And is already, like, way up there for me this season. Like, she's probably... Well, I know she's in my top five this for this season. Like, absolutely adore her. And I just, I hope that they don't have any more drama, like, majorly. Because I think they're cute and I still want them to be together. So, yeah. I'm a sucker for romance, okay? Anyways, that was pretty much it. Um... I'm so freaking nervous for tonight, let me tell you. Especially since they gave us the official, finally, promo. And Eli's like, can I have everyone's attention? And then freaking gets down on his knee. And Allie and Jenna and Claire all say at different times, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Like, oh! I'm so not ready for this, man. And to see, like, Eli, like, like freaking cry at Claire's graduation. Oh, my gosh. Baby. I'm going to be so heartbroken when he leaves tonight. But I'm not mentally ready for this. This is Eli's final episode. So no offense, seniors. No offense. Y'all have been a lot better. And I can respect you a lot more because now you're leaving and I'm like, okay, yes, I actually really do like a lot of you. But Eli, man, he's always going to be number one. And to see this beautiful man leave is going to be so sad. Um, yeah, I'm not ready for tonight at all. And it's going to be two hours because I'm watching the beforehand thing and then the hour finale, like, gonna be rough man I'm not ready and and you know I was watching Young Forever yesterday and I'm like you know what if they don't mention Adam at some point in this finale I'm gonna be extremely heartbroken they need to it's like necessary if they don't I'm it's gonna make me really upset because I hope they do he was supposed to graduate with them so I hope Adam gets a mention, and I hope Eclair is at least endgame, okay? I'm not saying that they're going to get, like, that the engagement is official because you don't know what's going to happen, but they need to be endgame, okay? That This is, like, a stress on me right now. Like, they could, like, the writers could not, they could make them not endgame, and it all relies on tonight's episode, but no. They need to be. Like, I'm I'm stressing about this more than I should be, probably, but oh well. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Um, tell me what you guys thought below. Um, and yeah, tonight is the night, finally. Get it? Because the episode's called Finally. Oh, okay. I will see you all tomorrow, and... Yeah, I have the most awkward endings. I'm just, I'm, I'm gonna go.